The first of the VML interviews is with the multi-talented industry professional, Ruben Austin. During his time as a student, Ruben performed in a number of shows with the Victoria Music Arts Charity. Good evening, Ruben. Evening. How are you doing? Uh, I'm all right. How are you? Not too bad. Um, so tell me, look, this is a big one, this. How, how it feels to have a dream role like Mowgli in a touring production snatched from you because of the COVID-19 pandemic? And how someone as person-centred as yourself is coping with isolation on the back of it? Oh, uh, well, from uh, when I started at uh, M&M, which is who I was touring with as Mowgli, um, I knew I wanted to play Mowgli in the Jungle Book because my tour manager on Peter Pan, which I did previously, uh, was in the Jungle Book a couple of years ago. And she was immediately telling me all about it. And I was like, that sounds amazing. And then I finally I got the role in January. And so we started rehearsing in February and it was all very exciting. So for it to then sort of end as abruptly as it did because of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, wasn't ideal. Uh, the, we sort of knew that the schools were going to close for a bit because um, the schools had started dropping the booking. So um, every now and then we'd be a, a morning gig and then we'd get a call over lunch and they'd say, um, your afternoon has been cancelled and uh, just go home and wait to hear more from us until eventually they decided they were closing it on the Wednesday. So we had our last gigs on the day following on the Thursday. I know that some of the other teams went back as soon as the announcement was made about the schools closing. So they went back on the Thursday morning. Some of them waited until the Saturday, but all of us had just sort of come in. So now because um, because we're all self-employed as well, um, we're not necessarily getting a ton of support, especially because um, I only became self-employed in, I want to say October, or maybe end of September. So um, I don't have tax returns from the previous year. So there is uh, currently no support available other than universal credit. Um, so, just, um, just, just, if I can just interrupt there a minute. Uh, tomorrow morning, the Arts Council are announcing um, £20 million pounds worth of funding to help artists who, who are in your position. Um, they're looking at one-off grants of 2,500 to get people through this. So it might be worth you logging on to the Arts Council tomorrow morning. That's for anybody yes. who's an industry professional, um, uh, uh, producers, actors, anyone who's who's got no no means to replace the income that was coming in. So mm -hmm. get yourself on the Arts Council um, website tomorrow morning. Oh, okay. Absolutely, will yeah. Right. So, and I know myself through um, we've had we've got four productions this year, which have all now been. Um, put on hold for a bit because we don't know when we're going to be able to do them um, and I've had to speak to the licensing companies to see where we stand with the licenses because when you get a license it's for a specific period so anyway we go back a few years don't we um, yeah so can you tell me I mean I remember the first time I saw you was as Renfield in Dracula um, yeah. at, at college um, can you tell me, if, if anything, what you got from your involvement with BML as, as a younger person? Uh, well, I had a lot of fun being part of BML. It was great. You know, it was a cracker mate to spend uh, at least my Wednesdays, potentially other nights as well. And um, we got to put on all the shows, which was great fun. Uh, it helped me build up my confidence a lot because I've always been quite a confident person. But it helped me uh, build up on that a lot. And as well, um, having the opportunity to... Uh, sing whatever I wanted in the sessions, but also then having people say, oh, you could also sing this and that would sound nice in your voice, allowed me to expand my repertoire mm -hmm. with a lot of songs that I'll still sing today, like um, High Flying Adored from Avita. Great one that you gave me. Okay. Um, so do you have a favorite memory from a VML show? Oh, it's gotta be um, when we did Extracts from Les Mis and I was Javert and we did the confrontation, and Valjean just punched me in the face and I fell down the stairs. <laughs> we that must was, get um, that piece isolated and try and fit it onto this channel. Gotta get it. I'm sure you've got an MP4 somewhere of just that little bit. Yeah. I think we did, because we had an award show later yeah. that year, and we showed the punch on at the award show, didn't we? Mm -hmm. I remember sitting in front of you seeing it happen, and none of the group around you knew what happened originally, so I started laughing. And then people cottoned on because they'd heard the slap, didn't realise it was it was your face that was punched. It was, it was really quite. I mean, it, it is yeah. a cold of memory, it really is. 
It's right. cracking. And you can see George just cracking up as well as he sings the rest of the song. I know. <laughs> because you can see my face as well. Um, but then he's meant to floor Javert, so it kind of worked. Yeah, yeah. It? Okay, it during sense. Bounces, which we did, I think it's four years ago now, I think. Time flies. Yeah, it's probably at so. least four years ago. I as producer teamed you up with your lifelong schoolmate, Michael Clark. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he's trading in the industry now as well. Um, and we yeah. had two other fine actors, George, who punched you in Les Mis, and Ryan McDonald, who's done a lot with me. Was that a good experience for you? Yeah, that was a great experience. Uh, great group of lads, obviously. I've, I've known Mike since I was, I think, five or six. Like we used to, um, we went to Cubs together. And that was where we first met. And um, so yeah, it was great to work with Mike because I got to a lot at school and at college and then also working with him at VML. Uh, it was great to have someone there that I knew. And I sort of knew George as well because we'd gone to the same primary school, but we hadn't really um, gotten to know each other very well. But yeah, and Ryan as well. It was great getting to know them, great working with a bunch of lads who also liked drama and musical theatre as much as I do. And I get to put on a show as wonderful as Bouncers as well. Well, for me, it was great to do it with such a young cast as well. Having to yeah, apologise to middle-aged men. Yeah, having to go to your dad in the in the foyer after the performance that he saw, saying, "I'm sorry, I did not put the words into your son's mouth." It was um, yeah. it was actually the right. It wasn't anything to do with me. Um, but no, I I mean, I think that's where we had we had a good laugh doing that, even in the dressing rooms, all the joking and the laughing and that. Oh yeah, and. and and on the back of that, really, I remember I wanted you for Horatio in Hamlet opposite Ryan MacDonald, who was superb as that eponymous character. Um, but you couldn't do it because your studies had to come first, um, yeah. which I understand. Do you think you would like to do more Shakespeare in the future, or is your passion kind of purely musical and contemporary theatre? No, I'd, I'd love to do Shakespeare. Um, for my third year show at university, we did Bear, which is a pop opera. Um, about two uh, lads who fall in love with each other at a Catholic boarding school and um, there's a lot of quotes from Romeo and Juliet in that because at the time they're also putting on a production at their school and so my character Jason was playing Romeo in their production of Romeo and Juliet mm-hmm. and so I got to learn a bunch of Romeo's lines, I got to learn his um, the but soft what light monologue yeah. and uh, the balcony scene and the pilgrim's hand scene so yeah especially coming off that I'd love to do a bit of Shakespeare yeah, I think, actually, I think I can see you in a lot of Shakespearean roles, if I'm honest. Um, and you certainly have the, the, the kind of the capability of doing it. Um, I, 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 saw, I saw the superb production you did a number, last year, was it, of Alan Bennett's The History Boys? Was that last year? Or the year yes, that was year? August. Um, that's got a, that must have been fun to do because it was fun to watch. And there seemed to be real rapport between the young cast members in it as well. But we all, got, we all got to know each other really well throughout the uh, the process, and um, yeah, it was just it was great fun to put on. They were amazing as well, and we um, we won a Noda for that as well. We did that's all that, yes, yeah. I mean, yeah, my, my mate Kieran my, my, won best actor as well. I took my teenage life to see that, and he he really loved it. Um, but the, what was the name of the guy playing Hector? Uh, Ray Ray Sutton. He's a, he's a fine actor. Um, did you feel? Um, he must have done a lot. You could tell he was a seasoned professional. And so do you feel you learn something from working alongside people like that? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, he's a very talented actor, so it's great to watch him and sort of pick up techniques from him. But there was a really nice moment. It was when we were blocking the bows in the week before the uh, production. And um, we had the, uh, the lads all went up and sort of the front and we bowed and then we were joined by the teachers and we all bowed together. And originally the plan was to have Ray come on and have his own bow, but he insisted on bowing with everyone else. Because even though he play Hector, which is such like it's such a huge role and it's very important to the piece, um, he was absolutely adamant that we all had to bow at the same time, and that was, yeah, that was a nice sort of lesson in like humility and working as a team as an actor. Yeah, 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 I get that. Um, and he did it. The whole team look. You you were so um, connected. There was a great connect in, in that play. You could tell that nobody was trying to upstage anybody else. You were all kind of keeping within your remit, which uh, which. And we know about divas to try to stage with the actors on stage. It does happen, but it hmm. didn't happen in history, boys. Um, so, Peter Pan, right, you mentioned it before. How was that? And how many venues did you play at? Um, 
like sometimes with our afternoons off, but then sometimes with our weekends. So it sort of evens out at 10 venues a week. And it was a 13 week tour, so 130 different venues. Wow. Um, that, sort of in that kind of ballpark. Uh, that was great fun though. It was, um, I hadn't done proper panto before. I'd done um, a sort of half pantomime uh, about James Bond whilst I was at university and I played James Bond and that was great fun. But this was like an entirely different level. Plus it was performing to uh, primary schools. And so that was great fun because the kids loved it. Ah, uh, right. Okay, I see. Yeah. So you didn't fly then, really? No, we had, um, there was a couple of moments because our set is almost all on wheels and we had um, flats that had come in and then they'd spin around each other and all sorts. And a few times I'd have to like jump behind a flat as it was moving so it looked like I was flying. Okay. And we had um, a little, I think it was a Ken doll and a doll of Anna from Frozen being Peter and Wendy and we just redressed them. And they were on a coat hanger, and there was a part where we sort of flew them across the back of the set. Okay. The <laughs> um, so, in, is Jungle Book coming back after the COVID situation is settled? Do you know? Uh, um, we hope so. I'd very much like to go back and carry on playing Mowgli. Um, is it reliant on standing, do you reckon? It depends on schools, because it's right. going around schools and performing, and they're like our main sort of people that we perform to. Uh, we have to wait for the schools to reopen. If they don't reopen until September, it's potentially possible that we might just start panto season early okay. and get cracking on that rather than um, bringing back Jungle Book for like two weeks and then moving Maybe their houses. Back next year, um, possibly. But, and do, it's M what's the name of the production company? Is it M&M? &M? M &M, theatrical Productions. Do they actually do anything in theatres or is it mainly school-based? It's mainly schools. It's based in theatre and education. We do do weekend gigs at like um, community centres and like small theatres sometimes. Uh, we've done, we did quite a few of them whilst we were up in Scotland. We were staying in Linlithgow. So we're going around sort of Leith and Edinburgh into a couple of social centres around there. Do you feel like you're living the dream as an actor then doing this? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think... I think if there was anyone ever going to go on further with this, it was always going to be you. Um, I've never known anyone quite so focused and single-minded as you are. Um, I saw one of the last performances of Daniel Radcliffe and Alan Cummings um, in Beckett's Endgame at the Old Vic in London mm -hmm. before they pulled it due to the pandemic. Um, do you have an opinion of how badly this is going to affect the industry? Um, because, because of the current situation, do you think we'll recover quickly? And I know, and I can say, ask you that from the point of view of what's happening with Jungle Book, what's happening with, are you going to rush into a panto? We don't even know at VML. We had, uh, before you answer the question, we had um, the Haunting of Hill House, Book Pompeii, mm -hmm. um, what was the other one? Um, I can't remember what the other one was off the top of my head. But we had, we've got all these productions going on in a freshly written room for a musical. And yet we don't know when they're going to be performed. And I have a horrible feeling that none of them will happen this side of Christmas because I think it's going to take a while. Do you think that's what's going to happen um, in, with, with you as well? I suppose you're in, sorry, I suppose you're in a better position because you're going into schools. But theatres, I don't know how quickly they're going to recover. You got any opinion on that? Any advice you um, can give us? I know for a fact because I'm in the big group chat that um, Adam Lenson, who's in charge of Signal, which is about a new musical theatre, has set up a, um, a Slack group, um, which is like a workplace group chat kind of thing um, for new musical theatre writers. And there's always people on there talking about different things that they can write. So Britain will still be producing new musical theatre throughout the quarantine. And um, after it ends, it's just a matter of finding places to put it on. And that's going to be relying heavily on finance and um, you know what sort of finances we can find to put things on in theatres, and uh, if there's going to be, a, God forbid, have to be any um, theatre closures or anything, it's hoping that we can bring them back up. But at the end of the day, people really like going to the theatre, and so I think that it will definitely make a comeback. I think quickly. my issue, I think my concern, particularly with um, provincial theatre, shall we say, is that we've moved the haunting from. Um, it was meant to be happening in in June. We've moved it back to November um, and I think from that point of view I even if even if everything was cleared by June I think there's going to be a period where people are going to feel uneasy sitting in a crowded theatre in case 
COVID is still around. I think it's going to take a while for people to get a little bit more um, confidence in being in crowded places after this, particularly the older people. And they form a large part of provincial theatre audiences, really. OK, so um, if Jungle Book is shelved, um, what's next for Ruben? Is it a panto? What plans do you have for the future? Uh, yeah, currently I'm looking at um, Panto. I sent in my email a couple of days ago. Uh, me and my girlfriend both did because we work for the company and we um, sent in saying which pantomimes we'd like to do. And um, yeah, they're, uh, as far as I know, they're looking at trying to put something together, some sort of semblance of who's going to be where uh, within the next few weeks, just so that there's something for everyone to look forward to in case the classic season does end up getting shelved. OK, um, here's a big question for you. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Oh, that is a big one. It is because, um, you think, as somebody with ambition, as I know you have, are you happy to be doing schools for 10 years? It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of what's in my mind. Or will you be going for auditions for bigger things in the West End and, and for TV and, and that sort of thing? I think I'd like to be going for bigger things. I love performing to schools. I've worked with kids for a long time. Uh, I used to do children's parties, I used to dress up as like uh, Captain America and that's how I got to Glastonbury okay. and um, I do all sorts of stuff like that but um, yeah I think I would sort of in the next few years like to uh, put that aside and start looking at other stuff that I could do. Uh, I write musicals as well so I'd very much like to put one of them on eventually. Okay, okay, um, okay, I mean that's throwing me, I didn't know you wrote musicals. Oh yeah, oh, that's, that was my dissertation, was um, right. a section of my musical about Leonardo da Vinci. Brilliant. Oh, I need to hear it. You're going to have to let me, at some stage, witness I'm that. I'm trying to get some of it recorded. It's hard because coronavirus, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right, Ruben, we've been friends for a few years now, and it's been a real pleasure to see the boy most likely <laughs> go on to bigger and better things. Um, and I hope that as you progress, you'll always remember to keep your feet firmly on the ground, because and I have to say this, and I'm saying this to people who are listening to this, um, your greatest quality has always been, you know, your warmth as an individual and the way you look out for the people around you. And I think you need to keep that, keep that, and it will stand you in good stead for the future. So, any last words for, for people who might be watching this? Um, people who are watching this, uh, if it's still the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, don't worry, theatre will be back. And if it's after that, uh, congratulations. And yeah, hopefully um, there will be a lot, a lot of theatre to come. Okay, thank you, Ruben. Thank you.